Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 15 beta one and iOS 14.7 beta three have been out for a few days and up to about two weeks for iOS 15 beta one. So it's almost been a couple weeks at this point. And so I wanted to talk about some new features in iOS 15 beta one that have been found since, or I mentioned, but was not able to find. And then also the overall performance battery life and more of both 14.7 beta three and iOS 15, and also when to expect the next beta and final releases. Now, the first thing is new features in iOS 15 beta one. Now there are a ton of new small features that have been found throughout. I did a follow-up video with all of those new features a few days ago. There's even more, but I'm going to share a few more other or updated features in this one. And the first one is legacy contacts. This is something that I knew about with beta one, but was not able to find at the time. So if you go into settings, tap on your name at the top, then tap on password and security. Under password and security down at the bottom, you'll see it says legacy contact. Tap on this and then tap on add legacy contact. And it says, add someone you trust, choose someone you trust to have access to your data from your account after your death. Share your access key. Your legacy contact will need to provide an access key and copy of your death certificate to access data from your account and also pass down your digital legacy. It says pass down your digital legacy to people you love through photos, videos, notes, documents, personal information, and more. And so Apple's thinking about what happens if someone passes away and we need to give this information to someone else. It was very difficult to do that before. Now you can add a contact to do that. So that's something that's really nice. Also in maps, there's some updates I hadn't seen elsewhere. If we go into maps and within maps, of course, you've probably seen this new globe, but if we go to search maps and then tap on the city that's closest to me down at the bottom, we get some information about this. Now this is not available for all cities, but you can see it gives the population its elevation area and overall distance. So you can see the area of 307 square miles, 15 miles of distance and its elevation and more. This works through different cities as well. So if I go to San Francisco, for example, it's in larger cities. So it's there. It just depends on the city and where it is around the world, but they keep updating this with more information. Now in Safari, there's some updates as well. If we go to Safari and then we scroll down, we have the option to tap on edit. Under edit, we have background image. We can set a background image. Maybe you like the wallpaper in this video. You can set an image of your choosing here or just add whatever you'd like. And now you have a background image on the start page. So that's new as well. Also to go along with Safari, if we go to settings, scroll down, go to Safari, under Safari, scroll down a little bit further, you've got hide IP address. You can hide your IP address from all Safari web pages now. So if you go into hide IP address, you can select off trackers only or trackers and websites. So you now have the option to hide that. It's a great privacy option along with the cross site tracking that we had before. So all of that has been added and that is just some of the small changes in iOS 15 that I haven't covered yet. I have a whole other list of a bunch of other changes and features that I'll probably be covering in another video since it will take quite a while to go over all of them. Since since many of you keep sending them to me as well as I keep finding some also. So thank you to everyone that's sending those along. Now, as far as the overall usability of iOS 14.7 beta three and 15 beta one 14.7 beta three actually seems to be quite good. Most people are saying that it's very stable. It's the most stable version of iOS 14, it seems, and it should be at this point. Most people are not having any crashes. The phone is not getting too hot. And in the YouTube community poll that I ran, the comments are saying similar things. So I'll go over that in just a moment, but in general, these are really the most stable version of iOS 14 so far. And like I said, it should be now, there are a few people that are having random issues, maybe with Bluetooth, but most people report that Bluetooth is much better. I find it to be pretty good on iOS 15 as well, as far as Bluetooth is concerned. However, it's not perfect and does have some issues from time to time. What's taking so long as far as what's going on with the Bluetooth, connectivity and things like that with AirPods is hard to say, but there have been problems since about 14.3 for some reason before then it seemed to be okay. Something changed that actually made it a little bit worse, but so far it seems to be okay. It's just not as great as it was before for most people. The same is true of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi seems to be good for most people on 14.7 beta three and iOS 15. Although there are occasional issues with iOS 15, I'll talk about in a moment, but in general, it's okay. 
As far as battery life on iOS 14.7 beta three, well, I haven't been using it on my main device, but I had someone that I reached out to on the discord server. I have a discord and telegram server that shared their battery details so I could get a better idea of what it was like overall. So if we go into discord, you can see here, 1891 iPod touch eight shared this with me and he's on an iPhone eight plus 64 gigabyte space. Great. And as you can see, on this day, this was last Wednesday, he had two hours and 11 minutes of screen on time, two hours and four minutes of screen off time. And well, this is showing 180% of his battery usage. So I'm not sure if this graph is a little bit different. I haven't seen it like this before, but generally if this would represent 100% or we just go to 100%, he would be getting about five hours of screen on time based on if he used it until the battery was empty. So that makes a lot of sense. And he shared another one as well, where it showed his general overall usage is about two, two to three hours of usage regularly. And so it's decent battery life. I haven't seen a whole lot of complaints of battery life at all. So that's a good sign. Now, as far as iOS 15 beta one, there's numerous issues with FaceTime calls and phone calls, whether or not they just don't work properly, or I personally have not really had too many issues with it, but some people are having major issues with FaceTime. And that's one of the dangers of running an early beta before it's even a public beta. Sometimes that presents issues for people and quite a few people are complaining about that. Just general calling issues overall. I've had issues with the widgets not loading. Sometimes they just don't show up at all for some reason and it's just blank. The only way to fix this for me is actually to reboot the device and then they show up again. So there's definitely some issues going on still with that. We had those early on with iOS 14 as well. Also quite a few people are complaining that music is just stopping from time to time. It just sort of stops and for whatever reason, doesn't play after 15 seconds or so quite a few people are having that issue as well. So there's definitely issues going on with beta one. It's not unexpected, but it's overall stability for me is actually quite good. It's been really good for me compared to say iOS 14 beta one or iOS 13 beta one. It seems to be much more stable this time around than the previous version. So that's a great sign. Now, as far as my battery life on iOS 15, let's take a look at that. So we'll go here and check it. And my battery health is still at 100%. And like I've said before, the, the updates don't reduce this, but rather just recheck the physical capability of the battery. This I would expect to drop very soon, but I do charge this on a wireless fast charger using MagSafe. It's a Belkin wireless fast charger and I charge it every night, all night long. So it holds up well there. We'll go to the last 10 days and let's take a look at yesterday since I haven't checked it and I haven't gotten great battery life according to this. So two hours and 37 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 58 minutes of screen off time and about 50% of the battery is left. If we go to the day before, I almost got three hours of screen on time. So I'm only getting about seven hours of screen on time in general, based off of this beta. It seemed to be a little bit better depending on which day. Generally I would get eight to 10 hours of screen on time, but it is an early beta. And the more you use it with the different features, it will drain more quickly. Now that's not a problem. That's just the sign of an early beta. They don't focus on battery at the beginning. They'll figure that out a little bit later on. Now, as far as performance on older devices, quite a few people have asked me about that. And on the iPhone 6s plus, it seems to be okay, but upon initial boot up, it was really slow. I've talked about this before. You'll see it's been sitting here for a few minutes and the battery is kind of low, but in general, it's performing good now, but on initial boot up, it's really slow and choppy right now. It's actually okay. So it seems to be okay. It's not great, but it is an older device on a beta one that's actually functional and working. So that's a good sign. Now, as far as iPad OS, I've been using it full time on my iPad pro 12.9 from 2020 and it's working. Okay. I haven't had a single crash. I haven't had the widgets sort of disappear. It's working really well as far as iPad OS is concerned. So that part's great. I haven't had apps crash. I haven't had any weird anomalies with this. I'm very pleased with how it's working so far and surprised that it's as stable as it is on the iPad. Some people are having issues with widgets from time to time and moving them around. You'll see as I move it around here, seems to be okay, but some people are having a few issues with that. And I would expect some with an early beta, but it's surprisingly stable for me. And I haven't seen a whole lot of complaints about it with the YouTube community poll either. Now, if we go into settings, we'll take a look at the battery life on this, and then we'll talk about the release date, when to expect that, and also the YouTube community poll and comments. So as you can see, I was just charging it a little bit ago, but I'm getting about 
we go back a few days, I charge it every few days, probably eight hours of screen on time with this, six to eight with the beta. I've been using it heavily for YouTube, for example. You'll see it used 50% of my battery and a lot of background activity for Find My. So I do need to turn some of that off as it's using a lot of the battery. And I suspect that's what's using a lot of people's battery on this version. So many people are having poor battery life. That's a newer feature when you use air tags and different devices, even if your phone's turned off, you can use find my now. So that could be causing some battery drain. Now, as far as the release date of iOS 14 beta four, some people are asking me about that regularly or when to expect it to release in general. Well, I would expect beta four as soon as maybe Monday at this point, along with iOS 15 beta two. Now, Normally Apple waits a couple weeks. They could wait a little bit longer, but a couple weeks for iOS 15 betas or a new iOS beta. So generally they'll wait two weeks and then another two weeks for beta three, for example. And Apple did say that iOS 15 public beta would be available in July. That makes me think that given that time frame, maybe around the 5th of July after the holiday in the United States on July 4th for Independence Day, maybe on the 5th they'll have it ready or or the first few days of that week. They haven't said publicly though, what the date is. As far as iOS 14.7, I would expect that any time now we could see a release candidate or we could see beta four. Again, Apple has not said, but we will have iOS 14 betas all the way until September when they release or iOS 14 versions until late September when they generally release the newest update. So it's going to be a while. We don't have specific dates, but we can count on usually every couple of weeks for a new beta, beta one, two, three, maybe even up to four, and then we'll go to a weekly cycle. But as far as iOS 14.7, expect it weekly until they come out with an, a release candidate and then the final version. Now, as far as should you install any of these betas? Well, if you're watching this video, you probably already have. However, if you have not installed iOS 15 beta one yet, I would caution you against installing that because it's unstable for some people. And I would never put it on your main device unless you have a backup device or you don't mind losing data and reverting back with say your computer, for example. However, if you're going to try iOS 14.7, since it's in public beta with beta three, that would be fine. It seems to be very stable. But again, if you have any concern, I would just hold off until the public release. Now, as far as the YouTube community poll and comments, let's go ahead and take a look at those. And at the time of this video, I ran a poll earlier this morning for iOS 14.7 beta three, and you'll see iOS 15 has a ton of feedback as well. 33,000 votes and 385 comments on the 14.7 beta three update video. There's 108 comments and 12,000 votes. So thank you to everyone participating in this so we can get all of this extra data. Now, 12% of you are saying that iOS 14.7 beta three is great. 4% are saying it's terrible. 4% are saying it's okay, but has bugs. And 15% of you are using iOS 15 beta one and 65% of you are on public versions, iOS 14.6 or older. So that makes a lot of sense. I know a lot of you don't want to wait to see the new version, but you hold off wanting stability over all of the other things. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the comments. So I've read all of these comments prior to this video. That's where I get most of this information from, but let's take a look at some of these, maybe five or 10 of them. Walter says iOS 14.7 beta three on iPhone 12. Most things have been pretty smooth, although battery life seems not as good. Used to be able to make it to 11 PM with roughly 50 to 55% left with my phone usage. But now I get home at 5:30 to six with maybe 40% or less or in less screen on time. Scott D says I'm on iOS 14.7 beta three on my iPhone 10 R. I've not had any issues yet. Battery life has been pretty good. Isaac says everything is good for me on my 12, but I do feel like my battery is draining a bit faster. I also noticed a bit of lagging on the app drawer only has happened twice. Undefined chap says iOS 14.7 is doing great on my iPhone 6s plus, which I've handed over to my small brother. He plays Roblox and among us a lot and the battery stats prove iOS 14.7 beta three is solid on older models. Devin Griffith says I'm on iOS 15 beta on my iPhone 10 R it's great. There is still some times where my phone will lag or freeze but except for that, it's good. JM says using it on my iPad pro 2020, not seeing any huge performance issues compared with 14.6 that said still holding off on iPhone 12 until the public release. The only thing I would complain about is that the, uh, the Bluetooth 
iPods Pro connecting when it feels like it issue is still there intermittently. Arush Bansal says, hopefully I'm saying that properly, iOS 14.7 on iPhone 11 still have that network dropping issue, but only for a couple of seconds, so not really a big deal. Mizuner says iOS 14.7 is great. Now I'll take a look at one or two different comments on iOS 15 beta 1. We'll just see if anyone posted there as well, or we'll switch to newest since I went over quite a few of those before. And you'll see CH says iPhone 12, Apple Music keeps crashing on CarPlay and when I open a new iMessage. I have to physically scroll to the bottom of the thread to see the new text. Other than that, it's been great. Battery life for me is better than the iOS 14.7 betas. And so iOS 14.7 beta 3 and iOS 15 beta 1 still have their issues, of course, but 14.7 is getting very close to finish and hopefully we'll see that wrap up pretty soon and release to the public. Now, if you are still having issues, make sure to report them in the feedback app. Of course, that way can that that way Apple can prioritize those and make sure those bugs are taken care of based on their priority of what they have. And so that's everything with iOS 14.7 beta 3 and iOS 15. Let me know if you've found anything else that hasn't been mentioned anywhere in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.